Chandra will join. We will introduce him. We'll start with uh, Amit Goyal. Right. So kind of in the program. Okay. All right, sir. We'll we'll begin. Uh, apologies for the delay. Uh, so we are about to start with the session uh, that we have all been waiting for from such a long time. The session will be chaired by Mr. Bhupendra Chaube and Mr. Amit Goyal. Mr. Bhupendra will join us in a very short while. In the booming Indian economy, the entertainment and media sector continues its upward journey. The sector is on the cusp of a strong phase of growth backed by rising consumer demand and improving advertising revenues. The industry has been largely driven by digitalization and higher internet usage over the last decade. As one can probably imagine, working in media is fast-paced and extremely competitive. If one can handle the pressures, it can be very exciting to make a living. What more, there can be so many roles that one can explore. To talk about the present day scenario, history has records of so many pandemics and plagues. However, COVID-19 pandemic is much contained and we owe it to the media for spreading awareness and reducing the damages. It India has made the world like a watertight compartment. You all will be very happy to know that for the first time ever, this session is being streamed on YouTube. Now, I request Mr. Amit Goyal to, in I'm so sorry, I'm uh, so sorry. I now request Mrs. Rinu Joy to introduce the guests, Mr. Bhupendra Chaube and Mr. Amit Goyal, although Mr. Bhupendra will join us in a very short while. Thank you, Shubhra ma'am. Good afternoon to all. It's time to know more about our resource persons for the day. The first guest of today's webinar is Mr. Bupendra Chaube. As a variant of 1994 batch, Mr. Bupendra Chaube is India's most trusted political journalist on news television. A person who epitomizes the rigor of journalism in a world where opinions can be shaped in 100 characters, he is the quintessential old world journalist who goes not just by his own gut, but the ground level realities. He has most recently stepped down as executive editor at CNN News 18, where he was the main political anchor for the network. He drove a team of bright political reporters across the country and hosted the channel's flagship news show, Viewpoint. Having won national and international acclaim for his work, he brings with himself two decades of journalistic excellence. Bang in the middle of this corona pandemic, he has teamed up with his brother Zavarian, Mr. Amit Goyal, to launch the most innovative and groundbreaking news platform of our times. Although he's not present right now, but still we welcome you, sir, to this webinar. Thank you. Our second guest, our second guest and the resource person for the day is Mr. Amit Goyal. Mr. Amit Goyal began his journalistic career in 1985 with the Indian Express. Since then, he has worked in various capacities with the Financial Express, the Economic Times, the Times of India, Asian Age, and Hindustan Times. He is a business journalist and is currently non-executive director with The Pioneer. He also appears as a guest commentator on various TV channels and speaks mainly on macro and political economy. He graduated from St. Xavier's School, Civil Lines, Delhi in 1981 and did his BCom honors from Khalsa College, Delhi University, and later PhD in journalism from YMCA. Xavier family, welcome you, sir, to this webinar. With such an illustrious panel in the house, surely it will be an engaging hour full of information and guidance for our young man. Thank you so much, and over to you, Shubhra ma'am. Uh, the students aspiring to work in the media sector need to know how to start, when to start, and how to sustain and grow in the media sector. After we hear the insights from our guest speakers, we will have a question and answer round. Students can write their queries in the chat option available to them. Now I request Mr. Amit Goyal to share his experiences. Thank you, Shubhra. Thank you, Ms. Joy. Well, Good afternoon, friends, and what a uh, opportunity, I would say, in all this uh, pandemic to be becoming fully digital, to be meeting like this, 
and um, uh, missing at this point of time uh, bupen chobe my good friend and a fellow zavarian 1994 batch 13 years younger to me and one of the leading anchors i think he must be struggling with his hair he has long hair when you see him you will realize that so uh, as soon as he joins we'll probably take it forward from there as far as i am concerned uh, friends mm-hmm. uh as far as i passed out from the same school you are in in 1981 and uh, i was a average student like most of uh, my friends were and never good in academics never very good in sports never good in aca- only thing which i liked in school was english i mean i liked other things also but english was one thing which was i was very comfortable with i don't know why despite my background not being very english oriented at home and somehow i was very good at it and i was always good at writing not good at speaking but good at writing hi bupen hi bupen hi yeah hi i can hear you. so i i had started yes. would you like yeah yeah, yeah yeah i can hear shall i start or uh, you would like to no no go uh, right ahead go right ahead amit bhai i'll listen all right all right all right all right They have read no, out no, no, your introduction. No, no, no. You start. You start. You start. All right. All right. <coughs> so, in uh, I was average in school. Oh, nice. Uh, Thank you. Thank but you. But I was, I was uh, good in writing. So, which is why I could ever always get a distinction in English, in the school, and I would participate in everything in all sports activity, without getting into the team A team as we normally say A team B team. I had. played for school in cricket i played football i played badminton i have done dramatics i have done debating but somehow being a average student average speaker i was i could go up to a point and never beyond and of course after I passed out in 81 since as i told you i was average in academics uh, i got 62.5% in 12th and i could just manage barely manage admission in delhi university in kalsa college in bcom honors i did my 3 years from there and then i joined this journalism course i always wanted to be a cartoonist i used to draw cartoons but i was again as i said very average in it not very good and i would take my cartoons to different newspapers different editors i would show it to them and obviously since they were not very up to the mark i they were rejected but somehow i got my first break actually in a magazine called onlooker there was a uh, very renowned journalist of that time virinder kapoor who gave me that break and from there i moved on to indian express suman dubey was the editor who uh, he was also a very you may not know him but he has been a very renowned editor of his times and from indian express i moved on to financial express where i did 4 5 years 1990 i moved on to economic times which was undergoing a change from 8 pages to 24 pages from white to pink and it was one disruption that was caused at that time from normal you know both indian Ex- uh, financial express and economic times were 8 pages same headlines but economic times caused their disruption because dhirubhai ambani at that time was planning to launch a newspaper which was on the lines of wall street journal and then of course i joined i was lucky to be involved in covering the first ever reforms under manmohan singh and narsimha rao in economic times and of economic times was also undergoing the change and i made whatever good i could make out in between for a year i was transferred to times of india to carry out a few things for the paper i was the second editor of daily times uh uh for two days and again moved back to times of india and because in 1999 i got this opportunity to join pioneer as a equity shareholder as a owner and i was a vice chairman there are some issues there i have with pioneer the, those are being sorted out in the meantime uh in 1999 when i joined pioneer this television became a disruptor then again and it pushed back the print and uh, television was all around i think that is the time when bupendra also joined uh, television and came into the so television caused one more disruption in 1999 and suddenly newspapers were fighting with 
for its impact vis-a-vis -vis television. And now I, we see that you now the digital social media is is somewhere there to cause disruption in the television industry, in this TV news industry. And after this, another disruption which will be caused is, is being caused by Bupen Chobe. That is something which is a secret now. You will get to know maybe in week, 10 days time when he takes over India ahead channel. That will be a very new thing in India. In fact, in the world, Bupen will be able to tell you more about it. So this is my story. And my school days were very good. I mean, I, I really enjoyed my school days. And there were free days. I mean, uh, our teachers, fortunately, our principals and teachers, which we got, were very lenient. They ignored our mischief. And and it they created that personality which we have today. That time we don't realize this, but later we realize that how much today you would be surprised that we are in touch with, I don't know, seven, eight hundred ex-students. Uh, Exavarians, Doxians all over the world. I mean, not just Delhi, but New York, America, and they're all doing very well, most of them. And um, so it's always a pride, a mo moment of pride, and uh, uh, to be meeting a Zavarian in some position, influencing the social, the society. And I hope you, all of you, also would one day walk when you walk out of the school. You will all do well and be connected with each other. Uh, these days, when uh, uh, meeting is not possible, and uh, but how do how do we kill time? Those who are in we kill time through our friends. We are network. This is how we access information through telephones. This is how we are connected now. So uh, so technology helps you in many ways. It's a uh, it's it's something which. Uh, which will keep causing disruption. I mean, as, as it happened in music industry, in our days, we had these radios we started with. Then came this cassette players. You know, and in, uh, so the, somebody invented this tape recorder where you put in a cassette. And uh, so radio just went out of the market. People were listening to songs they want to listen to on a cassette player. Then somebody invented the CD players. Suddenly, cassette market was out of fashion and CD players were being played. Now you see it on YouTube and everything. So technology is the biggest disruptor into my mind. Always changing technology, you have to change yourself, you have to be ahead of it. And, and you know, you plan your investments, there are a lot of finances which goes into journalism now. So all of those who are wanting to be journalists, TV and other things, you should always keep in mind it's a challenging time. There's a lot of money now. There's a lot of money for good journalists. And you can now think of actually uh, resting your career on the salaries which you these days draw in journalism, which was not the case earlier in my days when I started. My salary, for instance, was 750 rupees. And I remember when I got married uh, in 88, 89, uh, my salary was 750 and an ordinary kurta pajama was 500, 600 rupees, which I brought for my wife. So, but th this, these things have changed drastically. Today, you can think of running a family from a salary drawn through your journalistic career. Then there are mass communication uh, opportunities also available. I mean, today, journalism is not just bringing news or talking about it. There are other, many other platforms on which you can play on. As you grow, as you take take up this profession, you would get to know about them. Some of them, you are already there. You are already a communicator. You are there on Facebook. You are there on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. So you are already communicating to the world you don't know, you haven't met. So that's a big space which you are connected with. But once you establish yourself, you can pick up your uh, precisely the area of expertise you want to be in. And anything, any help I can be for you to help you, assist you in selecting subjects or in um, understanding what journalism is about, I'm always available. Besides besides this seminar, this web seminar, webinar, I'm always available. Mr. Devesia is there or through Shobra or Mrs. Joy. Thank you. Uh, Amit sir, uh, if I could request you to put on your video, it becomes a little more... Uh... I don't know. I've been trying to. I thought... Uh, how do how do I do that? I've okay. been trying in. Uh... Okay. All right.
One second. Start your video. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yes, we could see you now. Thank you so much. So can we hear from uh, Mr. Bhupendra Chaube about your experiences in the in the field of media? Students would love to hear from you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Shubhra. Uh, you know, I was just looking at, uh, at the list of all students who have uh, who have all joined in. So, you know, you must know Amit and I, uh, when we were in, when we were in school, it was Amit is far senior to me. <coughs> um, when we were in school, we weren't used to, you know, seeing uh, women around us. We weren't used to seeing girls around us. <laughs> so when I look at uh, so many girls now, it, uh, it makes me, it gives me a, gives me a different feel. Hmm. Uh, so, are you still around or you've lost connection? Mm, I've lost him. Yes. I think he'll come back. I think so. Mm. Uh, uh, so in the meanwhile, so students can drive. So some internet issue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, um, yes, we got him back. Shubhra, you can hear me? Can, am I audible, Shubhra? Yes, sir. We can I'm hear on, you. Okay, okay. Now, there's my apologies. You know, where I'm not in Delhi right now. So, where I am, uh, where I am, unfortunately, sometimes the internet plays up uh, uh, and, and it ends up becoming a problem. So, I was just saying that, you know, it gives me a different feeling uh, and a different sentiment. Uh, truth be told, and I want to say this very clearly, I was uh, deeply touched by the gesture of, of, of DOXA uh, when last year they invited me to, uh, to be the chief guest. Uh, at school's uh, uh, 50th anniversary, and it was it was an outstanding event. At the 60th anniversary, actually, if I remember correctly, uh, it was an outstanding event which was created, uh, and I was uh, really impressed to see the kind of detailing which was being done to theatre, which was being done with music. So let me start with my experiences in school. Uh, contrary to uh, to Amit, um, I was always a very good student, uh, and I took great pride. In uh, in my marks, in my academics, uh, I uh, I come from a from a simple middle class family. My father, who's no more now, uh, was a uh, was a professor in Delhi University. He taught botany, and, uh, and and you know India in my time and society in my time was uh, was vastly different from the society uh, of which we have now. Uh, one of my I remember one of my classmates when I was in junior school. I think probably I was in class four or class five. One of my classmates was actually from the family, or from the family which owned the Batra Cinema Hall, which is uh, which is you know near Kingsway Camp. So uh, this was a family which owned some two three cinema halls, and uh, and you know and and the student would uh, uh, he, he would he would drive to school in his own personal car, etc. Which is uh, these are all normal things now, but at that time it, it was it was like a, a luxury, and uh, and and. And and you know to see to see someone and to interact with someone who owned a cinema hall for me was a very overwhelming experience at that time. You know now you interact with the who's who in corporate tycoons etc. But even then, uh, while while we would me and my friends would would look up uh, would look at the guy and we'd say wow I mean you know what a fancy lifestyle he lived in a big flashy house. Uh, he himself never treated. Uh, us in, in any different way. I mean, he may have been the owner of whatever cinema hall, but it didn't really matter. So school was, you know, school was full of making, meeting vastly different characters. I spent uh, 13 years of my life uh, in St. Xavier's, right from class prep till class 12. And uh, life in junior school, I remember Father Money uh, would be, was our, was our principal when I was in junior school. Uh, Brother Itok was our, uh, was our principal when I came to senior school. And just recently, uh, when we were all not stuck in Corona pandemic, and when we could actually have physically met each other, uh, Amit and I um, actually had the pleasure of spending an entire afternoon with uh, with Brother Itok and a whole range of other, you know, the senior uh, officials from the school. Uh, if one of our former students, uh, a resident only in Delhi. What I learned the most, uh, and if I could share that with all of you, and then I'll get on with my career moves and yeah. opportunities. What I learned the most from from am I audible? Sorry, someone okay. saying something. 
Sir, you're audible. Yeah, is it, I, I'm audible. Am I audible, Shubhra? Is that yeah. fine? I'm audible. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah. So, so you know, uh, school. What I learned the most was that there was absolutely no bar, and there was absolutely no restriction restriction in terms of what you could have dreamt for. I remember when I was in class six, uh, one of uh, one of again one of our former school students, a uh, Paramveer Singh. Uh, Mr. Devasia would uh, would know him. Uh, I'm not sure whether uh, whether he does anything now. But Paramveer was was uh, was a former student. He was a gifted musician, and uh, and he would do a musical, a musical production with students of school or st with students specific to St. Xavier School once every year uh, during the summer vacations. And uh, and that was the first time I remember when the concept of after school activities sunk in my system. So I lived in Noida. Uh, the school was there. I didn't have a school bus. Uh, the reason why I got admitted to St. Xavier's initially was uh, because I I started off when I was young kid when I was in prep. I was in Model Town. I lived the first few years of my life in Model Town, and then we moved to Noida. But at that time, there was no school transport, and I was in class four, if I remember correctly, if, uh, when we shifted to to Noida, which meant that one was dependent on uh, on public transport. One was dependent on BTC buses for getting to school and coming back from school. And uh, you know, and public transportation system is also not what it is today. So, so imagine as a class four student, you know, with your bag on your back, and uh, and you being the only student coming all the way from Noida to school was quite a Herculean task. But again, uh, I, I I I benefited immensely from the tremendous uh, gratitude which was shown towards me by the school authorities. I remember Mrs. Dere was the vice principal, uh, and I think from class seven till class twelve, I would have attended school assembly maybe. On ten occasions, because I could just not make to school in time, uh, and it was uh, it was it was never really held against me. Uh, and and you know my friends uh, often tease me even now. My classmates tease me even now when we meet that uh, actually, ma'am, I come from Noida, so my permanent excuse was that I'm late. I can't make it to the assembly. I'm late for the class. Uh, well, because I come from Noida. So so, but you know, but but the the beauty of the school was uh, that it wasn't ever considered to be an act of indiscipline on my part. Uh, uh, both the vice principal and the principal were were very very uh, warm uh, towards me, and uh, and 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 it convinced me. It convinced me that uh, you know you could be humble, uh, and yet you could afford to dream big. Uh, did I ever set out to be a journalist? Did I want to get into television? Not really. Uh, when I was in uh, when I was in school, much like many of the students here, uh, since my father was a professor, I was also thinking in terms of getting into an engineering college, becoming maybe a doctor. I want some stage. I want to be a pilot, like most people. I appeared for the NDA exam as well. I remember in class 12 when I did get through the exam, uh, but uh, but you know, but 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 I just didn't go for for the interview, uh, which was my dad. I applied for the Air Force, and there were some four or five students from uh, from my class who all of us had gotten through. And and none of us ever went for the interview. Uh, we just appeared for the uh, the examination because we just took it for a lark. We thought, "Acha chalo, dekhte hain kitna aata hai." You know how much we know, or how much we know about general knowledge and and what not. Uh, at my time, again, if if I could, you know, uh, I I give full credit, frankly, to what I went on to become in life, and who I am as a person, as a professional. I give absolutely total two hundred percent credit to school. Um, I, 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 you know, a lot of people look at institutions of um, of uh, of higher education when you go to college or you know when you go to university, and a lot of people give credence to which college you went to and which university you went to. But I think that my formation as a professional, as a human being, I think the role which was played by the school authorities was phenomenal. Uh, I remember Mrs. Nia Varma was uh, was our English teacher. Uh, and I shared this. I've shared this experience with with multiple groups in school. When I was in class seven, uh, I remember uh, I was to go for an inter-school event, an inter-school symposium or a debate. And and Mrs. Nira Verma was a guide, and you know she was our English teacher. So she asked me to look up a word in the dictionary. Uh, and I was in class seven, right? I was in class seven, uh, and I didn't know how to read a dictionary. I didn't know how to you know to go through a dictionary when I was in class seven. So she said, "Just look up this word in the dictionary," and you know, she saw that I was fumbling. So you know, she told me, she asked me, she says, "Kya nahi aata dictionary? Dekhna tumko nahi aata." So I said, uh, "No, ma'am. I very sheepishly said, 'No, ma'am. I I don't know how to read the dictionary.'" 
so she sat me down and you know she had a whole chat with me and she told me this is what you do this is how you know this is how alpha practically you're supposed to go with it and then she told me if you know if you uh, if if you master this dictionary it will be a very handy tool for you for life so i really took her uh, her advice to to heart and uh, and later on in in my life as i went on i actually bought various versions of dictionary and since this was the pre google pre internet era uh one could uh, one could you know one could one could keep a pocket dictionary uh, with you at hand and uh, and you could you could do what you wanted to do and you could you know you could think in terms of uh, new words so now when i sit with my kids sometimes i ask them the bible to look for 10 similar meaning words and uh, and you know, all they have to do they get on the ipad and they simply say 10 you know similar sounding words to whatever and there is a result but uh, but in our times it was uh, it was vastly different uh and uh, and again you know this i could i could go through that experience i learned a lot of intricacies about public speaking about overcoming your stage fright uh, i remember the first time when i went on stage or was in school uh, and i think i was in class 5 or maybe 4 and uh, and it was the 15th of august uh, or the, the independence celebration so in our times there used to be a common assembly you know on independence day it would be in the big ground and uh, for whatever reason or on when i was in class 4 or class 5 it was decided that i will make a speech on independence day uh and i now i don't know if that riser is still i think that riser is still there so there was there was a little there was a riser that that, that was there on the, you know on the ground so uh, my height was 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 short enough that i couldn't really come up uh, from the riser so uh, so a stool was put up for me so i stood on that stool and uh, and i delivered a speech uh, you know before the entire school and it was the most unnerving experience of my life till then because i'd never been on stage and i thought that what will happen if i forget this forget some points you know what will happen if i uh, if, <laughs> if i miss out a few lines here and there uh, so even today you know when i uh, when i sometimes go up uh, and when i go to the television studios sometimes i'm reminded and my friends uh, make it a point to remind me of uh, what i felt like the first time when i went up on stage uh other than that you know why i had i i mean we were i, I look at amit who's 10 years ahead of me and uh, amit is, i sh- i see the, the warmth and the camaraderie which amit has with his own classmates and his own batchmates uh and the kind of fun that we have uh, you know with uh, with our class and so there is a certain bond uh, which got created uh uh and uh, uh and and i look at i look at my relationship with amit as a as a great testimony to that and i'm sure that amit must have i have some yeah. other friends but my it's it's coinc- it's coincidental it's coincidental that at this stage of our lives uh, amit and i have decided to team up and uh, do something that i'm very excited and passionate about which is to which is to create a completely new model of uh, of tv news so amit was referring to that Uh, just yesterday we went public uh, with this information that uh, that we've taken over a leading english channel it's a small channel uh, but uh, but just like that that sense of nervousness i had when i was in class 5 when when i went up to deliver that speech i have that sense of nervousness now as i embark upon an entrepreneurial journey uh, and and create my own um, my own channel uh, create my own media vertical and hopefully over a period of time we will be in a position in which in which you know we can uh, uh, we can really bring out a difference to the manner in which news is consumed to the manner in which uh, news is presented i know there is a lot of criticism about the news media uh, uh, i don't meet anybody these days who would have a kind word to say about the news media uh, but i can only say this uh, to all of you that the experiences that i have had and sure amit would concur with that the experiences that i have had in my life if i had gone on to become a big banker or if i had gone on to become a big real estate tycoon or a tech platform or whatever i don't think i would have had the kind of experiences that i've had in my career, in my life i don't think i would have managed to go to the kind of places the kind of countryside that i have seen in the kind of human stories that i have seen that i've had an opportunity to tell uh, the sheer volume of of information and experience that i embody today within myself uh and 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 it comes out very naturally uh it comes out very naturally uh you know when i uh, when i speak to people uh i could be on an evening dinner 
and uh, and you know being because i'm a tv face everybody loves to have a chat with you people want to know what's happening uh, people wish to have you know polite conversations with you and i always see at the end of the day i ask this question a lot of people they boss kyun mere se kyun baat karna chahte you know what is it i bring on the table and i and i often get this answer that what we get from you is that i'm in a position in which i can bring out real life anecdotes to very complicated life I think we've lost him again because of bad connectivity. Ah, uh, in the meanwhile, I request all the students to post in their queries uh, mm. on the chat option. So we we'll request uh, Mr. Ramit Goyal and Mr. Bhupendra Chaudhary to answer your queries, mm. and we we'll hope that Mr. Bhupendra is able to join back again. Mm. See, normally I see uh, people who are wanting to pursue journalistic career these days. They are wanting basically to be joining television, not newspapers. There is a general sense I get from the yeah. uh, generation. Uh, they they want to see themselves, and it's a very legitimate desire to see yourself on television, to be a known face, a popular face, and why not? but i don't think it happens very suddenly and automatically so you have to be you know there a lot of lot of time and effort goes into before you start anchoring a show one is news reading general another is reporting the third stream is you are a backroom person see with every news news anchor there is a pcr yeah bupen ji sir bupen Okay, uh, so I have a question. One of the student is uh, probably asking. Uh, the student is Sahil Babur, and he is asking if money and time is the priority. Then what is a uh, more, uh, which is the better stream? Is it journalism or mass communication? Amit sir, if you could help. I'll if I all right. Uh, well, can can uh, you just repeat? Can you just repeat your question? Yes. Uh, one of the students is asking if money and time is the priority. Just, Sometimes yeah. students want to make a career very fast in their life. So maybe mm. uh, the child is referring to that. Then what is the uh, more? In, which is a better stream? Is it journalism or mass comm? No. Uh, so you know the way it works is that uh, now there are very various, various institutes. Uh, which offer a course in in mass communication, and you can specialize in a certain field. You can specialize in radio, television. You can specialize in event management. Uh, you know, you can. Uh, I, I mean, journalism is uh, journalism is not just uh, uh, it's not just TV. It's not just journalism the way we perceive it. Uh, the, the the notion of uh, journalism has also changed. There is digital journalism as well. So, if someone wants to, if 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 the question is. Uh, or if the dilemma is that do I go in for mass com or do I go for journalism? Actually, journalism is a part part of mass com. Correct. So if you were to enroll yourself in a course in in mass communication, uh, you will uh, you will end up going through some specialization in the stream of journalism itself. Now, what which stream of journalism you choose? You choose radio, you choose TV, you choose print, you choose digital. That's something that's completely up. How many years does it actually take to be a, a well-established journalist? Sir, uh, could you hear me? Amit, bhai, may I have an answer? Yeah, I can hear you. Amit, yes. Amit, you want to take that question? Very difficult question to answer. There is no such time limit or time frame. by which you can become a successful journalist or a or a journalist for instance you become a journalist as soon as you join a newspaper <coughs> or a television thing i mean i'm talking about mainstream journalism which exists as as we know i'm not talking about specialized tiktok and and digital so what happens is that you know in our days um, uh you first join the desk which is called the news desk 
Now, what is news desk? News desk is something where it gets information from all over the world, from their own reporters of the newspaper and PTI agencies and all over the world. And then they decide which of this information will go on page one and which will, which will be the lead story, whether it will be eight column, four column, two column, which photograph to use, what will be the headline. This is all decided by the news desk. So you spend two, three years, four years over there at the news desk. So you get the hang of everything. See, you have to know, you have to be, you know, you, you need to be fully informed of what is happening around you. So news desk gives you that opportunity. And then some people continue at the desk. They, they, they like design work. They like giving headlines. They like deciding what should be on page one, how impactful the display should be. Some people then go up to becoming a reporter. And when you become a reporter, you are assigned a beat. There is a crime beat. Within crime beat, there is fire, there is police. So there are many verticals. So once you start doing that journalism course, you will probably be exposed to these verticals and you will probably be told about it. Chodo, there are many verticals. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we have another question uh, coming from a student and I think it's a very valid question. The student is asking, is journalism which we have before NDTV were attacked in the Delhi riots? Yeah, what was... Uh, just, just, can you just repeat that question? <laughs> okay. Uh, is journalism risky? As I have seen, journalists of NDTV were attacked in the Delhi riots. Ah, <clears throat> uh, it's as it's as risky as uh, as any other profession. Uh, see, journalism. No, what I uh, what what all of you must know. See, journalism is not uh, is not a profession. It's like it's not like going to a bank. It's not as if <clears throat> it's a it's a, it's not like a nine to five kind of a job. You know, I, in my life, I have uh, undertaken road journeys uh, of almost a thousand kilometers in a day where I would have driven, started off at 3am in the morning, would have driven six hours, gone somewhere, worked the whole day, come back and, you know, filed my story or, or been to the studio or whatever. So <clears throat> journalism is, is vastly different from any other profession that I can think of. Uh, it's a see. It's a profession which is a kick-based profession. It gives you a certain kick. Uh, it gives you it if it well if it gives you a certain brand, if it gives you a certain visibility and a certain profile, it also takes a lot out of you. So you you have to be ready to put in, you know, absolutely crazy hours. Uh, the first few years of your life uh, uh, could be hell. <clears throat> More so now. Uh, with the kind of economic scenario that, that is staring at us in our faces, <clears throat> you must ask yourself this question, and I say this to all students here. In every profession that you go, you must know that for each seat, for each step of growth, there will be at least one million people who will be vying for that growth, for the same step, for the same spot that you are uh, angling for. So you must have something which is so unique, which is so remarkable, and so completely different from everyone else, so that step should come to you. So always, you know, just remember that, which is, I mean, you know, you're talking about NDTV. I'll tell you, uh, uh, when I was doing a show uh, for CNN News 18, where I was still a couple of months back, and I went to these areas, and I came to a point where there was a, there was a physical barrier that was kept between two lanes. And community members, the Hindu community was on one side, and the Muslim community was on one side. And they said that uh, we're not going to let members of the other community come to our side because we're scared that these people will uh, will act, will get violent with us. I actually stood on that barrier, you know, with like a thousand people in front of me, and uh, it, in a in a very volatile kind of an environment between the two communities. <clears throat> but nothing happened to me. So the question is, was I not endangering myself? Of course, I was endangering myself. Why was I endangering myself? Well, a I wanted to tell the story. And B, I wanted to get the right kind of picture, you know, the right kind of visual, which would have told that story. But most significantly, the reason why I did it is because I had that kick. If I didn't have that kick, if I didn't have that passion, that absolute conviction, I would have stood by the roadside. I would have done a few interviews with a few people and I would have gone back. So it all depends on how much you push yourself in, in anything and everything that you do in life. 
Thank you so much, sir. Uh, in fact, it does mean that one needs to have a lot of courage and resilience while someone is on the field as a journalist. Uh, there's a one more interesting question that is coming from a student. Is government control on media channels too high? Yeah, absolutely. There's no doubt about that. Uh, you must know it's a, it's a tough world uh, and it's only become tougher. Uh, gov any government across the world, whether it's America or India or any, there is no government which is happy with the media. You must know this. Every government wants to control the press. Every government wants to muzzle the press. But it's up to the media, uh, you know, how it handles the press. So uh, are we are we 100 percent, you know, sold to the media, uh, to the government? Well, if not 100 percent, certainly 75 percent. Uh, but my only appeal to all of you is not everything is wrong with the media. You know, there are some reporters, there are some professionals out there who really work very hard at what they do. The unfortunate reality of our times is that four or five anchors or six anchors in the business have ended up representing the whole media entity as a whole. Now, media is not just Bhupen the Chaube or some, you know, two or three anchors. Media is a, is a whole range of analysts and opinion makers and writers and students and, and you know, reporters and cameramen. And, and the list is endless. So are those people also sold? You know, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, I give this example. There's this very bright reporter of, of ours who's just stepped down. This is a guy called Sail Mignani. You look at his Twitter timeline and look at the absolutely fantastic work that he's doing. So in today's day and age, even if the government was to think in terms of controlling us, was to think in terms of, you know, uh, well, completely buying us over, it's not possible in times of social media. You cannot prevent information from coming out in terms of social media. To that extent, I think things have really changed dramatically over the last uh, 10 years or so. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I have another question from a student who is asking if a person is good in writing articles and wants to become an editor in newspaper, what would you suggest to do in college, journalism or English honors? Me, Amit can take the question. I would suggest personally see uh, English honors because if you can express well in writing, you can really achieve a lot. It is something, you know, it's, it's a total, it's it's music. People who can write well is music to the ears. In our days, what we were taught, you know, how to report is like, supposing you have to report on, report from parliament. So what do we do? So we were told that you have to carry your reader to the parliament. You have to write so well that the reader, while reading your report, should feel that he's inside the parliament and he's watching what he's reading. So English honors helps you in building that vocabulary, that expression. And of course, uh, uh, you can pick up, see, journalism is not that specialized. You should know what the technology opportunities are available. And wow. journalism is about awareness, about being informed, what is about current affairs, about history. So language helps you a lot if you want to be an editor. If you can't write, then I tell you, even if you are good and your opinions and your point of view is very good, and if you can't express it well in writing, you will probably be lagging behind. So I can just give you one example. You know, uh, uh, although I am not his follower, so don't misunderstand me, but there were, uh, you know, when this Mandal Commission riots were taking place in Delhi, you, you all must be very young, but there was 1989. And that time, Arun Shori was the editor of Indian Express. And he was writing articles on those riots. I don't think and anyone I, was born at that time, Amit Bhai, in this group. Ah, so I, I just as an example, so it's all right. Then it's safer also. <laughs> yeah. They would know. I mean, they would have heard of Arun Shori. They would know, they would know so what What I'm happened. saying is his articles were, you know, uh, printed, reprinted. And were distributed, there was so much demand because they were written so well. So English honours, I would say. I, I, my personal suggestion, English honours. And history honours also helps a lot. I mean, as you would see a lot of people who do history <coughs> honours go on to become IAS officers or IPS officers. It creates that some kind of, a, I don't know, maybe a psychologist would tell you or somebody, that it creates a very active brain, active mind. And you feel good about it. And once you start feeling good about what you say and write, you do, people accept it. 
you know like bupendra he he talks very well he writes also very well since he is from stephens and and so why is he successful he is successful because his expression is good because his command over english is good so that helps thank you sir uh few more questions coming our way uh Uh, one student is asking which stream should you choose to become a journalist and what are the qualities that one should possess to be a good journalist you know uh, which stream uh, amit has had answered that question i mean i i studied maths for instance uh, and you know uh, i was good at maths in in school uh, and i did uh, my honors in mathematics i went on to well, do in my life uh, what i'm doing you know that's why i say it would be it would be a wrong thing to do if you were to look at the profession of journalism through any conventional prism you can you know in in our newsrooms for instance uh, we've hired lawyers we've hired uh, people who've done law uh, uh, you know to i mean not a journalist who i follow or admire but arnab goswami for all his flaws arnab goswami was a law student you know uh, one of the people uh, that i spent a lot of time with in my life rajiv sardesai was a law student you know he went on to pursue law uh, uh, barkhadat uh, was uh, was also a lawyer uh, i mean a law student i mean these are all people who did law you know uh, uh, either uh, uh, llb or or you know or 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 a masters degree in law so i don't think that i don't think it matters what 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 stream you take you can be an english honor student you can be a history honor student you can be whatever student uh, uh you know i'll i'll give you another example and and i think that's how the society has also changed aditya ghosh who recently stepped down as the ceo of indigo airlines aditya was with me in college and aditya ghosh did history honors uh and he went on to do mba you know post history and post mba he ended up becoming uh, he went to do a degree in law and he ended up becoming a partner in a law firm and from a partner in a law firm he went on to become the ceo of one of the biggest airlines in india so what you really need is amit has rightly pointed out i believe see and and i think that's a the difference maybe between between print and tv because having done two decades in television what i can say is this that if i was to ask you that do you have the ability to stand on your feet for 24 hours straight can you stand in blistering sun and you know and deliver stories and talk to people for 18 hours straight uh, are you in a position in which while you're sweating from your you know from your head to toe you are still coherent so that you're still you're alive you're ticking now all that happens if you have a kick if you have that passion so more than anything else uh, i i i mean it may be amit's view that you should you should have uh, uh, you should pursue english honors and maybe it, it does help you but i think all you need frankly is passion you need to know that this is something that i i, I really really want to do uh, and if you feel that this is something that i really really want to do i think you will you will figure a, 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 a way and space around it so it doesn't matter feel free enjoy i mean you should you should actually ask yourself that what course do i enjoy more you know do i enjoy sciences Correct. more do i enjoy yeah. if so let's say for instance i enjoy physics more now if i enjoy physics more i'll go on to pursue honors in physics and mm-hmm. after my honors in physics i will ask myself that what is it that that really that really gives me the kick do i if if arguing before a court uh, gives me a kick i'll think it does becoming a lawyer so at, at the bachelor's level i think that you should think at this class 12 level what is it that you really enjoy i mean do theater i mean you should look at uh, can you can you do a course in theater you know uh can i do can i do a course let's say in art i mean frankly if if i had to restart my life i mean if i if i was in class 12 today if i was with you shubhra i would have gone on to pursue a uh, a course either in law or i would have done a course in theater you know it would have it would have because now i i read a lot i read all kind of things i read different languages when i when i read theater when i read books on theater i realize that there is so much to learn you know there's so you read macbeth uh, you know you 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 read some of the, the shakespearean dramas uh, you read some uh, you read some russian authors and there's so much to learn from them you will never understand you'll never you never get those 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 lessons or those these days you know i watch a i must share this with you and maybe you guys will relate to this i watch a lot of 
world cinema on Netflix. In fact, my initiation into into you know Iraqi affairs or or Japanese politics or or Chinese issues is a lot through what I see on Netflix. So there are all kinds of movies out there. You know, all kinds of dramas, Korean dramas. You see Korean dramas. I mean, they give you a very sneak peek into what a, a society would be like. So I think in this in this day and age, this question is irrelevant. Frankly, what course I should follow? Because you can follow any course, and you can learn as much as you want to from from these various streams that I'm talking about. Thank you so much, sir. We've um, listening from uh, Mr. Amit Goel and from you, Mr. <coughs> I do realize that there's a lot of personal touch to what you are sharing, and I hope uh, that our students are going to benefit from a lot of it. Uh, now, I would request uh, Mrs. Uh, Shobha Miranda to give a vote of thanks, and uh, we'll soon be ending the meeting. Shobha, ma'am. Yes. Uh, good afternoon uh, to our dear speakers for the day, fathers, guests, teachers, students, mm -hmm. and parents. On behalf of the entire Xavier family, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Bupendra Chaube and Mr. Amit Goyal. Thank you, sirs, for your extremely concise, clear, informative, and thought-provoking insights. Many of our children have a great flair for languages and have profited greatly by this glimpse into the media world. Thank you for this foray for Ray, the world of journalism and past communications. You have opened up new horizons for our children helping them to understand the nuances of mass communications. We shall be ever indebted to you. And today, of course, we are indeed doubly proud to have you team with us. You have received your education here at Xavier's and have imbibed deeply the Jesuit values which we strive to infuse into our children. We have been fortunate to have you two with us whose value system is deeply rooted in the Jesuit philosophy and whose personalities have been shaped uh, within the confines of this campus. Thank you once again for sharing your experiences and expertise with all of us. May you continue with your good work and keep alive the values espoused by our founding father, St. Francis Xavier and St. Ignatius of Loyola. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> Bye. Thanks. <laughs>